The 73rd United States Congress was a meeting of the legislative branch of the United States federal government, composed of the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives. It met in Washington, D.C. from March 4, 1933, to January 3, 1935, during the first two years of Franklin D. Roosevelt's presidency. Because of the newly ratified 20th Amendment, the duration of this Congress, along with the term of office of those elected to it, was shortened by the interval between January 3 and March 4, 1935 61 days. The apportionment of seats in the House of Representatives was based on the 15th Census of the United States in 1930. Both chambers had a Democratic majority. Major events. March 4, 1933, Franklin D. Roosevelt became President of the United States January 3, 1934, the second session of 73rd Congress convened as mandated by the 20th Amendment to the United States Constitution, that had been ratified one year earlier August 19, 1934, House Speaker Henry Thomas Rainey died of a heart attack. The House had already completed its work for this Congress and had already adjourned. No speaker was elected until the next Congress. Major legislation First session The first session of Congress, known as the Hundred Days, took place before the regular seating and was called by President Roosevelt specifically to pass two acts March 9, 1933, the Emergency Banking Act CH. 1, 48 Stat. 1 was enacted within four hours of its introduction. It was prompted by the bank holiday and was the first step in Roosevelt's first hundred days of the New Deal. The act was drafted in large part by officials appointed by the Hoover administration. The bill provided for the Treasury Department to initiate reserve requirements and a federal bailout to large failing institutions. It also removed the United States from the gold standard. All banks had to undergo a federal inspection to deem if they were stable enough to reopen. Within a week one-third of the banks reopened in the United States and faith was, in large part, restored in the banking system. The act had few opponents, only taking fire from the farthest left elements of Congress who wanted to nationalize banks altogether. March 10, 1933, the Economy Act of 1933. Roosevelt, in sending this act to Congress, warned that if it did not pass, the country faced a billion-dollar deficit. The act balanced the federal budget by cutting the salaries of government employees and cutting pensions to veterans by as much as 15%. It intended to reassure the deficit hawks that the new president was fiscally conservative. Although the act was heavily protested by left-leaning members of Congress, it passed by an overwhelming margin. The session also passed several other major pieces of legislation. March 31, 1933, the Civilian Conservation Corps Reforestation Relief Act CH. 17, 48 Stat. 22 established the Civilian Conservation Corps CCC as a means to combat unemployment and poverty. May 12, 1933, the Agricultural Adjustment Act CH. 25, 48 Stat. 31 was part of a plan developed by Roosevelt's Secretary of Agriculture, Henry A. Wallace, and was designed to protect American farmers from the uncertainties of the Depression through subsidies and production controls. The act laid the frame for long-term government control in the planning of the agricultural sector. In 1936 the act was ruled unconstitutional by the United States Supreme Court because it taxed one group to pay for another. May 12, 1933, the Federal Emergency Relief Act CH. 30, 48 Stat. 55 established the Federal Emergency Relief Administration FARA, which developed public works projects to give work to the unemployed. May 18, 1933, the Tennessee Valley Authority Act CH. 32, 48 Stat. 58 created the Tennessee Valley Authority to relieve the Tennessee Valley by a series of public works projects. June 5, 1933, the Securities Act of 1933, CH 38, 48 Stat 74, established the Securities Exchange Commission, SEC, as a way for the government to prevent a repeat of the stock market crash of 1929. 
June 12, 1933, the Glass-Steagall Act of 1933 ch. 89, 48 Stat. 162 was a follow-up to the Glass-Steagall Act of 1932. Both acts sought to make banking safer and less prone to speculation. The 1933 Act, however, established the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. June 16, 1933, the National Industrial Recovery Act, NERA, ch. 90, 48 Stat. 195 was an anti-deflation scheme promoted by the Chamber of Commerce that reversed anti-trust laws and permit trade associations to cooperate in stabilizing prices within their industries while making businesses ensure that the incomes of workers would rise along with their prices. It guaranteed to workers of the right of collective bargaining and helped spur major union organizing drives in major industries. In case consumer buying power lagged behind, thereby defeating the administration's initiatives, the NERA created the Public Works Administration PWA, a major program of public works spending designed to alleviate unemployment, and moreover to transfer funds to certain beneficiaries. The NERA established the most important, but ultimately least successful provision, a new federal agency known as the National Recovery Administration NRA, which attempted to stabilize prices and wages through cooperative code authorities", involving government, business, and labor. The NERA was seen hailed as a miracle, responding to the needs of labor, business, unemployment, and the deflation crisis. The "'sick chicken case' led to the Supreme Court invalidating NERA in 1935. <laughs> Second session March 24, 1934, the Tidings McDuffie Act, Pub. L. 73-127, 48 Stat. 456 provided for self-government for the Commonwealth of the Philippines and a pathway to independence. June 6, 1934, the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, ch. 404, 48 Stat. 881 grew out of the Securities Act of 1933 and regulated participation in financial markets. June 6, 1934, the National Firearms Act of 1934 ch. 757, 48 Stat. 1236 regulated machine guns, short-barreled rifles and shotguns. June 19, 1934, Communications Act of 1934 ch. 652, 48 Stat. 1064, Pub. L. 73-416. Topic. Constitutional amendments December 5, 1933, 21st Amendment to the United States Constitution, repealing the 18th Amendment and thus ending prohibition in the United States, was ratified by the requisite number of states then 36 to become part of the Constitution. Topic. Hearings Topic. Merchants of Death Committee, United States Senate Special Committee on Investigation of the Munitions Industry Chairman, Senator Gerald P. Nye R. Duration, September 4, 1934 – February 24, 1936 – The Senate Munitions Committee came into existence solely for the purpose of this hearing. Although World War I had been over for 16 years, there were revived reports that America's leading munition companies had effectively influenced the United States into that conflict, which killed 53,000 Americans, hence the company's nickname, Merchants of Death. The Democratic Party, controlling the Senate for the first time since the First World War, used the hype of these reports to organize the hearing in hopes of nationalizing America's munitions industry. The Democrats chose a Republican renowned for his ardent isolationist policies, Senator Gerald P. Nye of North Dakota, to head the hearing. Nye was typical of Western agrarian progressives, and adamantly opposed America's involvement in any foreign war. Nye declared at the opening of the hearing, "...when the Senate investigation is over, we shall see that war and preparation for war is not a matter of national honor and national defense, but a matter of profit for the few." Over the next 18 months, the Nye Committee, as newspapers called it, held 93 hearings, questioning more than 200 witnesses, including J.P. Morgan Jr. and Pierre Dupont. 
Committee members found little hard evidence of an active conspiracy among arms makers, yet the panel's reports did little to weaken the popular prejudice against greedy munitions interests. The hearings overlapped the 73rd and 74th Congresses. They only came to an end after Chairman Nye provoked the Democratic Caucus into cutting off funding. Nye, in the last hearing the committee held in early 1936, attacked former Democratic President Woodrow Wilson, suggesting that Wilson had withheld essential information from Congress as it considered a declaration of war. Democratic leaders, including Appropriations Committee Chairman Carter Glass of Virginia, unleashed a furious response against Nye for dirt daubing the sepulchre of Woodrow Wilson. Standing before cheering colleagues in a packed Senate chamber, Glass slammed his fist onto his desk in protest until blood dripped from his knuckles, effectively prompting the Democratic caucus to withhold all funding for further hearings. Although the Nye Committee failed to achieve its goal of nationalizing the arms industry, it inspired three Congressional Neutrality Acts in the mid-1930s that signaled profound American opposition to overseas involvement. Party summary For details, see changes in membership, below. Senate There were 48 states with two senators per state, this gave the Senate 96 seats. Membership changed with four deaths, one resignation, and two appointees who were replaced by electees. House of Representatives Membership changed with 12 deaths and 3 resignations. Leadership Section contents, Senate, Majority D, Minority R, House, Majority D, Minority R. Topic Senate President John Nance Garner D President Pro Tempore Key Pittman D Topic Majority Democratic Leadership Majority Leader and Democratic Conference Chairman Joseph T Robinson Assistant Majority Leader Majority Whip J Hamilton Lewis Democratic Caucus Secretary, Hugo Black <inaudible> Minority Republican leadership Minority Leader, Charles L. McNary Assistant Minority Leader Minority Whip, Felix Hebert Republican Conference Chairman, Charles L. McNary Republican Conference Secretary, Frederick Hale Topic: House of Representatives. Speaker: Henry T. Rainey, D. Until August 19, 1934. Vacant thereafter. Topic: Majority Democratic leadership. Majority Leader: Joseph W. Burns. Majority Whip: Arthur H. Greenwood. Democratic Caucus Chairman, Clarence F. Lee <inaudible> Minority Republican leadership Minority Leader, Bertrand H. Snell Minority Whip, Harry L. Engelbright Republican Conference Chair, Robert Luce <inaudible> Senate Senators are popularly elected statewide every two years, with one-third beginning new six-year terms with each Congress. 
Preceding the names in the list below are Senate class numbers, which indicate the cycle of their election. In this Congress, Class I meant their term ended with this Congress, requiring re election in 1934, Class II meant their term began in the last Congress, requiring re election in 1936, and Class III meant their term began in this Congress, requiring re election in 1938. House of Representatives The names of members of the House of Representatives are preceded by their district numbers. <laughs> Changes in membership <laughs> Senate <laughs> House of Representatives Topic Committees Lists of committees and their party leaders, for members House and Senate of the committees and their assignments, go into the official Congressional Directory at the bottom of the article and click on the link four links. In the directory after the pages of Terms of Service, you will see the committees of the Senate, House standing with subcommittees, select and special and joint and after the committee pages, you will see the House, Senate committee assignments in the directory. On the committees section of the House and Senate in the official Congressional Directory, the committee's members on the first row on the left side show shows the chairman of the committee and on the right side shows the ranking member of the committee. <inaudible> Senate Agriculture and Forestry Air Mail and Ocean Mail Contracts Special. Alaska Railroad Special Select. Appropriations Audit and Control the Contingent Expenses of the Senate Banking and Currency Bankruptcy and receivership select campaign expenditures select civil service claims commerce district of columbia education and labor enrolled bills expenditures in executive departments finance foreign relations immigration immigration and naturalization indian affairs Interoceanic canals Interstate commerce Judiciary Library Manufactures Military affairs Mines and mining Mississippi Flood Control Project select, Munitions industry select, Naval affairs Patents Pensions Philippines Economic Condition special, Post office and post roads Presidential and senatorial campaign expenditures special. Printing Privileges and elections Public buildings and grounds Public lands and surveys Rules Territories and insular affairs Whole Wildlife resources special. House of Representatives Accounts Agriculture Appropriations Banking and currency Census Civil service Claims Coinage, weights and measures Disposition of executive papers District of Columbia Education Election of the President, Vice President and Representatives in Congress Elections Enrolled bills Expenditures in the executive departments Flood control Foreign affairs Immigration and naturalization Indian affairs Insular affairs Interstate and foreign commerce Invalid pensions Irrigation and reclamation Labor Memorials Merchant marine, radio and fisheries Military affairs Mines and mining Naval affairs Patents Pensions Post office and post roads Public buildings and grounds Public lands Revision of laws Rivers and harbors Roads 
Rules Standards of official conduct Territories War claims Ways and means Whole Topic. Joint committees Conditions of Indian Tribes Special. Disposition of useless Executive Papers Investigate dirigible disasters The Library Taxation Topic. Caucuses Democratic House Democratic Senate Topic Employees Architect of the Capitol David Lynn Attending Physician of the United States Congress George Calver Controller General of the United States John R McCarl Librarian of Congress Herbert Putnam Public Printer of the United States, George H. Carter until 1934, Augustus E. Gigingic starting 1934. Topic: <inaudible> Senate. Secretary of the Senate, Edwin A. Halsey. Chaplain, Zebarney Thorne Phillips, Episcopalian. Sergeant at Arms, Chesley W. Journey. House of Representatives Clerk, South Trimble Chaplain, James Shearer Montgomery Methodist. Parliamentarian, Louis Deschler Reading Clerks, Patrick Joseph Haltigan D. and N. A. R. Sergeant at Arms, Kenneth Romney Doorkeeper, Joseph J. Sinnott See also, Rules of the House. Other Officers and Officials See also United States elections, 1932 elections leading to this Congress United States presidential election, 1932 United States Senate elections, 1932 United States House of Representatives elections, 1932 United States elections, 1934 elections during this Congress, leading to the next Congress United States Senate elections, 1934 United States House of Representatives elections, 1934